Hi everybody, welcome to vlog number four. Four? Yes. Yes, vlog number four. Brought to you by Payne's Practical Products. All <laughs> your practical needs. <laughs> at a practical price. I am not very good at slogan. <laughs> Hopefully they come up with a better one that I can say around they do. Hopefully Kenna is better than Sam is. <laughs> Why well, you want to buy something, don't you? Buy it. Expect your products. Just buy it. <laughs> Maybe Evan came up with something better. <laughs> well, that started with Theo walking out of uh, Gwenael's office, um, and Kenna just kind of handed him some elf fruit and then ran away. Yep, that was cool. I was like, run away. I, I had things to do. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't spend time talking to you. Just, here, fix the elf fruit. Um, but that was cool, because Theo had a lot on his mind, so uh, he he was very predictable, and he threw himself into his potions and his poisons and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting for me to see how, how quickly, actually, the group kind of turned from their initial course of action to um to you know help the dwarves like i honestly wasn't expecting that i thought like well theoban's a dwarf and obviously that matters to him but with everyone else's limited knowledge on kind of the anvil or dwarven culture and and maybe they wouldn't have really had reason to care so much so it was really cool that the characters kind of rallied around him just to play devil's advocate does the players honestly think that it was believable that the other characters switched over to helping, you know, because they were, they were going to do one thing and then they switched over to do Theoban's thing. So do you f honestly felt like there really wasn't any metagaming there, that it was a legitimate, realistic thing for your characters to do? Um, for Cedric, at least, he really didn't want to go back to the C part. He just didn't voice his concerns because that's not him. Like he's like, oh, I guess we can do whatever. But deep down, he's like, please, we, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to. I don't want to do that just yet. Like so, kind of like when you agree to do something just because you don't have any better ideas, but the second another idea comes along, it's like, yeah, we'll do that instead. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, yeah, we don't have to do my thing. Let's go help out the door. <laughs> How about? Uh, Sam and Kimberly, did you think that was? Did you feel that was realistic for your characters? Uh, with Kenna, right now she's trying to just understand who these people are and why they got these bracers that were not for them. <laughs> <laughs> so right now she's just going with the group and trying to understand. So she didn't really care where they went, and it sounded like a good cause. But right now she's sort of like, who are these people really? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna travel with them. <laughs> so for me, it was it was the right move. Okay, and Kimberly. Uh, yeah, I I feel like uh, Andrea hasn't really been invested in any of the causes yet. So um, yeah, it it was it wasn't any like it seemed more important than the Cedric thing. So she's like, all right, we'll do that. Um, but I. I don't know. I feel like she, she uh, was more connected with this one because the dwarves are being enslaved to be golems. So she's she kind of wants to stop that if she can. <laughs> so, but yeah, no. I feel like for her, it was it was in it doesn't matter kind of choice. Like it, one way or the other. All right, this sounds more important, so we'll do this first. But. I, yeah. I guess it's fair to say that I don't think any of the characters were really invested in a course of action at that point. Yeah. So <laughs> when that came along, I think that was an opportunity to do some good and it was a, a cause to join. But uh, I think had it have happened later in the game, it might have, you know, when there was more urgency and there was stuff that, that needed to be done right this second now, maybe it wouldn't have turned out like that. But where the characters were, I don't think there was a lot of urgency to any of the places that they were going to go, so. Okay. 
um, the mage called me. I thought the mage and I talked, Andrea. Uh, Are you ever going to use her actual name, or is she always going to be the mage? I just said her name. <laughs> I just said her name. Reluctantly. The mage but, Andrea. Yeah. The mage Andrea. <laughs> hey, 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 that wasn't the question, though. <laughs> I used her real name, all right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was cool. And, I like talking, uh, those two talking together. Yeah. yeah. Um, even though we didn't get, like, Cedric didn't ask her anything, um, I'm almost 100% positive he will be asking her certain <laughs> questions um it's just at that at that point in time he was like i this is like the bad like a bad place to ask questions that i want to ask so yeah I, well the thing is about andrea is she's she, she doesn't have anything to hide like she's not worried about it as of yet so yeah she, she'll tell you whatever but i thought it was i thought it was kind of cool just the way Cedric looked at her, he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was my favorite moment of the whole, the whole <laughs> that, that conversation. I wanted to talk about the, uh, the chase a little bit uh, because the way I try to design the chase is I, because this campaign is uh, so character oriented, uh, character centric, and I'm not just talking about the PCs, but the NPCs. Uh, and as we keep going, you're going to meet more and more NPCs. Mm -hmm. And part of the uh, challenge is to try to give all of the PCs, the NPCs, moments to shine as much as possible. And once you guys start having like a party, hence you know the whole party selection screen yeah. incident that we're having, um, and you know, I I wanted to find ways to involve them, even when they're not traveling with you in an actual adventuring party. So, if you noticed, I specifically put a lot of the NPCs scattered about mm -hmm. on the map, specifically so that if you were to get their attention, they would somehow be involved in the chase gradually as it progressed, even though they weren't like with your group at the time, but they just the fact that they were involved, uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the chase, so that uh, you know you could see Connor in action for the first time, you could see some of the things that Razakale would do, besides, because he didn't really see Razakale do anything since session one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he was able to do his thing, even, even people like Cogs and Malcolm <laughs> got to do things. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm throwing his marbles. That was the place. so great. I love yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, I, 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 I purposely did that just so there was an opportunity to get those characters to do something with with combat. So I like that a lot. A lot. Yeah, lot. that was really good. It was a lot of fun. No, no, no one really had the spotlight in that. The spotlight was kind of in everyone, which I really liked. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And uh, yeah, Malcolm's marbles were hilarious. The marbles. <laughs> best part. Malcolm's best marbles. Part. Malcolm's marvelous marbles. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Alliteration always works with selling stuff. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag don't lose them. <laughs> no, that's, that's a bad thing. Don't do it. Um... Yeah, I was really torn during the chase scene because I, I know, like, you'll have all noticed that Theo didn't really jump into it. He was he yeah. hung back with Cogs. It was annoying for me as a player because I really wanted to get involved, but in Theo's mind, he, Cogs is a connection yeah. to Orzammar and Janar and his past, and if he'd have ran off with the group, and right. considering as well an, an assassin was after him and he didn't know if there were other assassins and he didn't feel comfortable leaving yeah. Cogs alone. Yeah. So that, so that was kind of hard for me because the character was staying put and I was like, but I really want to get in on this chase. Yeah. And the GM, as a GM, uh, that was something that I had to, uh, that I had to react to um, because of course my intention was for all of the characters, all of the PCs to run after uh, run after the Harlequin, but 
when a when a player ends up uh, doing what they believe their character would do, um, the GM tries to not punish a player when they're just trying to act in character because even though the PC wants to stay, the player kind of wants to be involved. So that's why, as a GM, I had to uh, respond to that by placing Hugh where I placed him. Because Hugh was actually supposed to be placed somewhere else on the map. But as soon as I realized that um, that the character, Theoban's character, wasn't going to be chasing after the um, Harlequin right away, I had to quickly think of a way to change the motivation like part of part of the gm's job is to keep track of each character's motivation and yeah. if the character's realistic motivation goes against what the player wants to do it's the job of the gm to tr help fix that because you have to try to meet them in between so i yeah. sort of threw through hugh in there because i knew if anyone could get theoban involved in the chase faster Hugh probably had a bit better chance of doing it just because they were the way you were positioned and his ability to create holes and stuff I'm like okay that's why I threw Hugh in there yeah it did create a great opportunity for the trampoline though which yes, is great. yes. <laughs> I like that we got to see more of the bracer abilities during the chase yeah. that was really cool that was wicked cool Cedric's uh electric feet like the energizer bunny <laughs> yeah one of the things that that hopefully the characters are starting to understand internally is that these bracers like you have just you've only like hit the tip of the iceberg of what they can allow you to do and as soon as you start getting creative and start experimenting and start trying things knowing this bracer controls air, this bracer controls water, this bracer controls this earth. Well, what does that mean? And what are the limitations of that? The, the idea of the bracers is I want you guys to try things. I want you guys to experiment. So you're not just limited to what you've already seen them do now. Yep. If there's a situation that you feel your affinity to a specific nature type could help in a situation i encourage you to try it because cool. that is the only way that your bracers abilities will grow is if you actually try to experiment with them coming up next episode cedric tries to jump off a building to see if he can fly <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> splat no he, he can't oh. <laughs> he flies for like a couple seconds he's like i'm doing it <laughs> 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 oh, <he did> <laughs> uh, any other comments about the chase? No, I'm, or... glad, I'm glad we caught them. Yeah, yeah. me too. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, right after... <laughs> I... There's, there would have been consequences. The... Things would have happened differently if you did not catch the Harlequin. I'm really glad we did. <laughs> I'm really glad we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. It was really close. It was very close. Yes. Yeah. And it was, it was an intriguing lead as well. Yeah. I really liked watching Connor fight. I thought that was fun. Yeah. He, he fight the way yeah. he fights was really cool. <laughs> and then you benched him. <laughs> you just got him and then you benched him. No, it's okay. <laughs> MVP of the game. All right, hit the bench. <laughs> MVP. <laughs> Um, we were we were talking about though, like because Halasa is not joining us for the next session, whether whether or not like we could get Connor to replace her, like Connor or the bear, because we need a tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like or how that would work. So I mean, I'll or or is Hallie on autopilot? Hallie would have been realistically on autopilot. I mean, oh, okay. so. Like realistically, Hallie's there. It's just she might not, she might not be talkative. She might not be giving a lot of input as much. She's maybe she's thinking about the maker a lot. <laughs> maybe yeah. Maybe she's maybe like there's maybe she's doing like a contemplative, medita meditative, meditative. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it, maybe it's just one of those things that she does every now and then, and she figures, okay, well, we're just going into the woods. I think I'll get into the, my little contemplative, meditative state. <laughs> yeah, don't ask for any questions. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah, I was glad that Andrea got to find out that the airships are going all over the world, because mm -hmm. uh, that's not something she thinks is a good idea. <laughs> it, was, it was nice to uh, be able to voice that. <laughs> be like, wait. You're giving it to Tevinter. Yeah. And they're not going to use it against Hinari. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, lo I love Cogs and I will always defend him, but at that moment I was like, oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way you were like, oh, Cogs. Every time. It was, like, yeah. it was not a weapon. It, there, there are specific rules that it's not supposed to be a weapon. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, everyone follows the rules. Don't make this a weapon. All right. <laughs> He's so cute. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, man. It does make you wonder whether someone like him should be building airships. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's brilliant, but, yeah, I agree with Kimberly. I'm not sure that's the best idea. And and if you didn't give it to Deventer and you gave it to, like, Orlay, then Deventer and Orlay would be at war, and it's just... it's. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Nope. No, it's not good. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and then I find out my ex is trying to kill Cogs and I wasn't happy. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting uh, you to do something with that. I only put it in my backstory. Uh, Andrea, Andrea did not trust uh, Princess Violetta at all. <laughs> at all. I don't, think, I don't think she's supposed to be trusted. She's kind of one of those shady characters that you never really know her motives. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering what your what your thoughts on on her is. I don't trust her at all. <laughs> you don't trust her at all. Okay. I don't like that she likes the bracers. I don't like that. I come from a random foreign country, and the first question she asked me is, oh, do you know Bostwick? And it's like someone I'm very familiar with. It's like, why would you ask me that? Like, That's like saying, hey, do you know Bob? And it happens to be the same Bob. <laughs> I was like, why are you asking me that? <laughs> bath salts. What about the peach bath salts? Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> I'm surprised she got in that. I would have been like, oh, heck no. There's probably some <laughs> evil thing to do with that. But the uh, the the bracers, I... I she collects I mean, you... magical artifacts. I don't want her to see what they do. <laughs> like, really well, you showed, you showed her some of it while you were bathing, right? I lied, though. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm from Tevinto. We can all do that. Man. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get the feeling she's a bit smarter than that, though, in all truthfulness. <laughs> yeah. So I've got, like, all sorts of points of deception. I'm good. <laughs> Why everyone in Tevinta can manipulate water. It's just yeah. a thing. <laughs> you guys really need to work on your education system. <laughs> the gypsies. <laughs> the gypsies. Ouch. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh, and yeah, I think it's funny because, like, I didn't, I didn't know, or Cedric didn't know what kind of magic she used. He was kind of freaked out by all like the shrunken heads and things, <laughs> but um, the only reason why he trusted Violetta, well, trusted, is because he thought Halisair trusted Violetta, mm -hmm. <laughs> or he thinks Halisair trusted Violetta, and that's who Cedric like connects with the most. So he's like, all right. And I think I think I think um, Halisair has shown to trust Violetta, so. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, well, up until like the end where uh, Andrea, I, I used her real name, <laughs> <laughs> the maid, um, came up and told me, <laughs> it was like, hey, this person uses entropy or like dark magic. And Cedric was like, okay, I, I okay. Like... I, I, I think I got okay. a bit of tension there, though. But like Andrea was like, "This this woman, yeah, she seems really dodgy." And 
Cedric was just like, well, how does I trust her? So I sensed a bit of tension there between the two characters. Oh, yeah. yeah like, I, I felt like Andrea wanted Cedric to be more kind of against her at the time. I wanted him to be a Templar. Wait, God. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was being a little... He, he she's using little... dead bodies Fine. to make, make magic. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, like, even though he does trust Halasair now, since he knows that, he's going to be like a whole lot, like a lot more on guard. Because I think the past sessions, he's been kind of like getting used to like just getting stuck into this role where he's like, ah, well, you know, mages they can. <laughs> like they're just mages. Like you can't live with them. You can't live without them. Like blah blah blah. <laughs> but now, now he's kind of like, oh wait, there, there still can be bad mages out there. Like he kind of like got like snapped out of that like false bravado kind of thing that he was with before. Um, so now, now he's just going to be like a lot more on guard around Violetta than he would have been but you know she could be perfectly nice just a little bit open yeah uh, he's not gonna do anything he's just gonna keep an eye on her no, just just to you know kind of go to the other kind of devil's advocate i suppose is that she could that could just be her way of acting but she doesn't actually want to deceive or injure the party in any way uh, that that's why cedric hasn't done anything yet. He's just like, all right, I'm going to keep an eye on you now. And the other mage. And the other mage. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to kill them apart now? Mage one, mage two. Yep. There's Connor Andre's... too. There's three of us. Mage three. There's, there's Connor as well. So Andre is mage one, Connor is mage two, Violet is mage three. Um, you all oh, look alike to me. And how about, well, and how about Hugh? Uh, you, I, I won't forget Hugh's name. I, 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 <laughs> I guess Hick, Hugh's not strictly a mage anymore. Yeah, but he's an ex-mage. So that, that sounds like that sounds like that sounds like uh, that sounds like a comic book character, an ex-mage. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an awesome comic book character. <laughs> I liked how Kenna reacted when she found out that the bear was gonna stay behind. <laughs> she was so yeah. cute. So sad. <laughs> it was. I don't know if it came across, but it was generally like scary thing for her because she's never gone without mm -hmm. him for very long, mm -hmm. and she was actually like letting him go. And it was really hard for her. Mm -hmm. But well, I mean, you guys have been together for five, five years. Five years. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think that I think that before the blight hit, I mean, you guys didn't you guys didn't spend as nearly as much time with each other when the blight yeah. before the blight hit, and now you know you guys were just always together. So yeah, I think she questions her skills, like if she's even good enough without him, especially what ap what happened after the big battle in the first session. I think she questions a lot of her skills since she lost everything. Mm. So <clears throat> it was really hard for her. Let him go. <laughs> Anything else before we close? Um, do you guys have any expectations about what's going to happen next session? Mm hmm. Yeah, I want to know this actually. Uh... What do you guys think of this Zerlinda chick and this flyer? Oh, man. I, I don't know. It, it... I'm really worried that we're just going to see a little. Golem factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ding, ding. I I can't. Um, I know that for everybody else, they've they've just heard of Zerlinda as um, you know, the mastermind behind the Cog's assassination. But Theo doesn't remember her like that. Like he doesn't see her as like evil because he knew her like as a castless dwarf struggling. Um, you know, desperate in Dust Town, and it's really hard for him to see her as this person that would do wrong without any kind of reason or motive just to be evil. So it's going to be really hard for him to, to think about the woman that he was with 
and then to find out she's doing these things. So I think that's going to be really hard for him. Because mm-hmm. she's, she's not a bad character. She wasn't in Origins and she wasn't when she was with Theo, but so to hear that this is what she's orchestrated, it, Theo doesn't really know what to think. Um, based else? off the flyer, I think uh, Cedric is going into this knowing that it's going to be a trap. Because dwarves learning magic, he thinks that's a preposterous kind of like idea. So he's like, all right, there's no way we're going to just be walking into this and seeing mage dwarves like casting fireballs or whatever. <laughs> Oh, it would like, be so great if he could, though. It would be so great. He he would be pretty dumbfounded if they were. He'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wish, I wish, because I love mages and I love dwarves. I've never been able to play both in the Dragon Age universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think he's he's kind of going into this with, like, like uh, be on guard now that He's with that mage even more so because this is more than likely a trap that they're just trying to capture dwarves to turn them into golems or something. Mm-hmm. Mm. That would suggest that Zelinda had worked with the Carter, and uh, I know when one is desperate in Ozmar, that's what they do. But again, it's like it's just that level of evil that you know can't bring himself to put with Zelinda. I don't know if it's going to be as cut and dry as it sounds. I think it's going to be quite complex. You might want to tell that to our uh, Cedric, because he he might run in there like, all right, let's take care of business. (laughs) (laughs) Would he listen to Theo? Like, if Theo told him, hold on, this isn't what it looks like, would he listen? He'd need an explanation to why. You can't just be like, no, no. You can't do that. He'd be like, the hell I can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if, you, if you're like, that's like my ex or something like that. Well, you already know that. He, oh, like, I do? Announced oh. he announced it to the party, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then you'd have to point out, that's her. Don't kill her. That's my ex. Because <laughs> I have what? no idea what she looks like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I could be wrong, and she could be totally evil now, and Hawks just totally ruined her. But... <laughs> <laughs> but just give you that dialogue. Every time that yeah. smirk and the eyebrow raise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you say, you take our dreams and you crush them. <laughs> I know. I love, I love his adorable conniving grin. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the way his lips pursed together, like I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see soon. You'll see soon. <laughs> This this actual this this next session is a session that I spent a lot of time writing, so I am very excited about it. Oh, cool! So, cool. A lot of time figuring I, out all the nitty gritty details of how this is going to play out. So yeah, I I really appreciate it because I get the feeling it's going to be very theocentric. So I appreciate all the work you've done on it because sure. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, is that it before we move on? Uh, I just have one question. That okay. Yes. Any, up. Yes. Whatever question you want to ask. Um, Go ahead. Where were the Templars? Because Cedric didn't voice anything. But after, I think it was Sam who was well, like, "What the heck?" <laughs> like, we'll keep in ra- well keep in mind that each round is six seconds. Oh, true. So like okay. each round is six seconds, and I don't know how many rounds it was, but I think it was like in under a minute. So, I think that. Uh, it's valid to say they're probably like where were the there probably should have been Templars near the front door. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So someone dropped the ball there, um, and uh, but as far as why it took the Templars so long to get there, well, the whole chase only lasted like forty seconds, maybe yeah. not even that much. It wasn't that long of a chase. It feels long because. You know, yeah. you're going in turn, yeah. but yeah. keep in mind each round is six seconds long. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. I I did cringe a little when Kel- Kenna started yelling at them though. <laughs> I, I was so glad when she said, "I'll handle this," and I'm like, "Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Terrible <laughs> 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 